Our story begins with Keiki, the luckiest boy on earth, who after cleaning his calligraphy clubroom with his cute female friends, finds a love letter addressed to him next to a pair of white panties. Keiki is ecstatic to finally get a girlfriend, but since there is unfortunately no name on the love letter, he has no idea who left it for him. After confiding in Shoma, his best friend, they decide to call his secret admirer, Cinderella, until they find her true identity. Since the love letter was left in the club room, they conclude that Cinderella must be one of the four girls who helped clean the club room earlier that day. The suspects are Sayuki, Keiki's senpai, who has airbags attached to her chest. Yuika, Keiki's koai, who is as flat as the books she loves to read. There's also Nanjo, Keiki's classmate, whose chest size is Nanjo business. And Mizua, Keiki's sister, who he doesn't consider as a real suspect because he's never watched anime before. The next day, Keiki runs into Sayuki, who surprisingly acts completely normal around him, which makes him doubtful that she is his Cinderella. As such, he decides to visit the library next to talk with Yuika, who thanks him for always helping out at the library but urges him to quit the calligraphy club so he won't be seduced by Sayuki's monstrous melons. Those are her words, not mine. Later that day, during gym class, Keiki notices Nanjo staring at him, and as he contemplates the possibility that she could be his Cinderella, he is hit in the face with a basketball. He wakes up moments later in the school infirmary and is surprised to see Nanjo next to him. After some brief small talk, Keiki asks her how she would react if he were to get a girlfriend. To his surprise, Nanjo responds that she could not support such a thing and leaves the room. At the end of the day, Keiki is demoralized as he is not any closer to figuring out who his Cinderella is. But suddenly, he spots Sayuki with a lost dog and helps her return it to its owner. When she sees the dog playing with its owner however, she says that she's jealous and asks Keiki to pet her head like he always does to his sister. Keiki is a bit hesitant at first, but he eventually gives in and pets her head, which Sayuki greatly enjoys. After returning home and talking about his day with Mizua, Keiki becomes a little bit more certain that Sayuki is his Cinderella. But the next day at school, Keiki is shocked to find that Sayuki has begun avoiding him, and he can't seem to ever get a hold of her. Frustrated by this, Keiki forcibly stops her after school and confesses that he knows her secret. Sayuki is surprised to hear this and asks him if that means he dislikes her now. Keiki reassures her that he doesn't hate her at all and that actually he's really glad. This makes Sayuki happy and she tells Keiki to meet her in the clubroom tomorrow after school. When he arrives there the next day, Sayuki tells him that, ever since the first time they met, she knew that he would be the only one who could accept her for who she truly is. She then asks him to close his eyes and he obliges as he believes she is about to kiss him. But when he opens them back up again, he sees Sayuki in a dog collar with a dog leash in hand as she begs him to let her become his pet and claims that she literally wants him to own her and treat her like an animal. But Keiki must have no blood left in his brain because he refuses to be her master. The next day, while helping out at the library, Keiki is visited by Sayuki, who playfully teases him and begs him to punish her as harshly as he wants. And when Sayuki finally leaves, she grabs a book about dog training on her way out and tells Keiki that she looks forward to training with him, which just confuses a now jealous Yuika, who after witnessing Keiki and Sayuki's weird relationship, demands that Keiki give her some attention too and to appease his koai, Keiki agrees to go on a date with her. This is Keiki's first date ever, but he's actually thrilled to be spending the day with such a cute girl. Thankfully, their first date goes great, and even ends with Yuika kissing Keiki's forehead, as thanks for him saving her from a bunch of flirty guys. On the train back home, while Yuika is asleep on Keiki's shoulder, he reminisces about how distant and cold she was when they first met, and how they grew closer together every day, until she completely opened up to him and they became friends. And as he watches her sleep, he wonders if this adorable girl could actually be his Cinderella. The next day at school, Yuika has Keiki meet her in a private room and confesses that, from the first time they met, she knew that he was the only one who could accept her true nature. Keiki is nervous, as he believes that he's finally about to receive a love confession from his Cinderella, but in reality Yuika asks him to be her slave. She then takes off a piece of clothing and shoves it in his mouth to reward him for being a good slave. As he lays there suffocating, Keiki wonders if this is truly how he's going to die. He suddenly wakes up in his bedroom the next day and absolutely dreads having to go to school again as he doesn't want to deal with Sayuki and Yuika's nonsense. But thanks to those two weirdos, Keiki comes to the conclusion that his Cinderella must be Nanjo. After school, Keiki heads to the calligraphy club room and finds Sayuki in a maid outfit upon opening the door. He immediately slams the door back shut however and runs away. 
He then runs into Nanjo shortly after, who tells Keiki that she's tired of him being nice to everyone all the time, and that she doesn't want to see him with other girls anymore. To make it up to her, Keiki, Shoma, and Nanjo head to an arcade together and spend the whole night having fun and playing games, like they used to do in the past. At the end of the day, they part ways with Shoma, and Keiki decides to walk Nanjo home so he can figure out if she's really his Cinderella. As they walk and talk, Nanjo seemingly comes close to confessing her love, but is interrupted by a sudden downpour of rain. After finding shelter, Keiki notices Nanjo looking at a picture of Shoma and concludes that she's in love with him. Nanjo denies this however but runs away without explaining anything, leaving Keiki confused and unsure if she is his Cinderella after all. When he returns home, he gets the feeling that he somehow hurt Nanjo's feelings and is not sure how to make up for it. He decides to confront her the next day at school and apologizes for hurting her feelings by promising to do anything she wants. She leans in closer to him and asks him if he's truly serious about that. Seeing her reaction, Keiki is certain that she is his Cinderella and that she's about to confess her love to him. Nanjo then says that the only thing that would make her happy is if Keiki started dating Shoma, his best friend. It turns out that Nanjo is actually a popular manga artist who writes forbidden boy-on-boy -boy fan fiction about Keiki and Shoma. Keiki of course refuses to partake in her wild fantasies, leaving Nanjo with no choice but to threaten that she will do everything in her power to make sure that Keiki never gets a girlfriend, as that would get in the way of her inspiration for her manga. After a long day, Keiki is shocked to find out that the last candidate for Cinderella ended up being just as crazy and weird as the others, and he's depressed to realize that he's back at square one with no idea who sent him the love letter. When he returns to his shoe locker however, he finds a picture inside of him with Sayuki in the maid outfit, along with a note threatening him to come to the astronomy club room, or else. With no other choice, Keiki goes along with the blackmailer and enters the creepy and dark club room, only to be met by a short girl named Koharu, who tells Keiki that she's sorry to have to resort to blackmail, but she just can't help herself anymore because she's madly in love. As he turns around and sees how cute she is, Keiki begins to believe that Koharu might be his Cinderella after all. He immediately leaps forward and asks her to marry him. However, Koharu refuses as it turns out that she is actually in love with Shoma and just wants Keiki's help to get closer to him. Keiki is of course reluctant to help out this obvious stalker, but she reminds him that she has an incriminating picture in her possession and she will spread it all over the internet if he doesn't help her out. The next day, Keiki visits the calligraphy club and finds Yuika in a bunny girl outfit for some reason, with Nanjo doodling in the corner. Sayuki explains that both girls decided to join the calligraphy club so they could spend more time with Keiki. She also reveals that she's a huge fan of Nanjo's comics, much to Keiki's displeasure. And the situation worsens when Yuika is shown the comics, and she also begins to love them. It's then that Keiki realizes that even his peaceful sanctuary has now been overrun by crazy girls. Later that day, Keiki sets up a meeting between Shoma and Koharu. To his surprise, the two hit it off pretty quickly, and their meeting ends with Keiki taking a picture of Koharu and Shoma together to commemorate the day. When they return to the astronomy clubroom afterwards, Koharu notices that Keiki looks depressed and offers her help as thanks for connecting her with Shoma. Keiki then decides to spill the beans about Cinderella and the crazy girls. As they talk, they come to the realization that it's entirely possible for Keiki's Cinderella to be someone other than the four girls who helped him clean, as someone else could have entered the clubroom after they left. They decide that Keiki's next move should be to question all four girls, to see if they witnessed anyone else near the clubroom on that fateful day. But when he visits the clubroom to question them, he sees the girls acting weird again, and immediately slams the door shut in their faces. He then remembers that he ran into his teacher that same day, and decides to go question her instead. But on his way to the teacher's lounge, he runs into Ayano, the student council president, as she accidentally trips and falls down the stairs, and lands right on top of him. Embarrassed by this situation, Keiki asks her to get off, but she denies this request, and instead asks him if they can lay like this together for just a little while longer. Afterwards, Ayano thanks Keiki for saving her and gives him a bag of homemade cookies, which he enjoys despite her getting uncomfortably close. Before they part ways, she plunges her face into his chest and caresses him tightly. When he asks her what she's doing, she replies that she's just recharging and leaves. After this weird encounter, Keiki consults with Koharu once more to see if Ayano could be his Cinderella. But after stalking her for a while, Koharu thinks that Ayano seems like a perfectly normal girl, and not the kind to leave her undies in a love letter. Keiki then thanks Koharu for her excellent recon skills, and heads to the calligraphy clubroom to look for more clues. But upon arriving there, he sees that Yuika is the only one present, and she's set a trap for him.
He trips and she climbs on top of him before once again demanding that he become her slave and pledge his undying loyalty to her. When he tries to push her off however, he accidentally puts his hands on her tiny mountains. Embarrassed, Yuiko runs away in tears while calling Keiki a generic harem protagonist. Those are her words, not mine, but I agree. After gym class the next day, Keiki runs into Ayano again, but she keeps her distance from him and eventually runs away. Confused by this, Keiki decides to get changed and visit Ayano in the student council room, but is surprised when it's just the two of them alone. Ayano feeds him apple pie and some comforting warm tea while peaceful music plays in the background and she lays her head on him. With this soothing atmosphere, Ayano begins to fall asleep, and Keiki is becoming drowsy as well. As his eyes begin to close, he thinks to himself how this situation is actually pretty romantic, and he's happy to have finally found a girl who isn't crazy. But when he wakes up moments later, he finds Ayano between his legs, trying to remove his boxers. It turns out that Ayano has a thing for smells, and when Keiki saved her and she landed on top of him, she knew that he was the only one for her because his smell was so captivating. She further explains that she avoided him after gym class because his smell was just too stimulating for her. She then asks Keiki to hand over his briefs so she can smell them briefly, but he of course refuses. Later on, a depressed Keiki confides in his best friend about his lack of luck at finding a normal girlfriend. However, Shoma reveals that his luck isn't any better because he visited Koharu's house and was creeped out by finding several DVDs in her room, labeled with his name, and a notebook that detailed every single thing he did, every day. Both men lament how the only girls interested in them seem to be crazy. The next day, Keiki runs into Nanjo on his way to the astronomy club, and she climbs on top of him, claiming that this is research for a new romance manga that she's writing. She then pretends as though she's going to kiss Keiki, but gets up and walks away before actually going through with it, leaving Keiki both confused and embarrassed. When Keiki finally arrives to the astronomy club room, he finds Shoma on top of Koharu. However, they claim that this was just a misunderstanding, because she tripped and he tried to catch her. While picking up the pictures on the ground, Keiki notices the timestamp on one of the pictures, as well as a girl in the background. Keiki immediately recognizes the girl, and with this evidence, he believes he's finally found his Cinderella. He decides to put a plan in motion to definitively find the identity of his Cinderella, and invites Sayuki, Yuika, Nanjo, and Mizuha to the pool. Once there, Sayuki and Yuika fight over Keiki as usual. To appease the girls, Keiki decides to spend some time alone with each of them separately and eventually spends some time with his sister too. Later on, the group surprisingly bumps into Koharu, who's working a part-time job at the swimming pool. She tells them that they need contestants for a love confession event taking place at the pool, and Sayuki decides to enroll every girl in the competition, with the winner being able to force Keiki to follow a single order that the winner gives him, without complaining or saying no. And despite Keiki's complaints, the girls agree to enter the competition. As the girls take turns confessing their love for Keiki, he miraculously misunderstands every single one of their confessions, through some seriously impressive mental gymnastics. When Mizua comes on stage however and confesses how much she loves her brother, Keiki is unsure how to interpret those words. But the crowd must have been full of anime fans because they voted for Mizua's weird sibling love confession and she won the competition. Afterwards, before they head home, Keiki has a private conversation with his sister. He congratulates her on winning the competition, but asks for her forgiveness for what he's about to do. He then suddenly lifts up her skirt to reveal her white underwear, the exact same that had been left with the love letter. Thanks to the picture, he had realized that Mizuo was actually his Cinderella all along, because he could see her in the picture wandering around school after she had supposedly left. Mizua does not deny this and confesses that she truly does love him, and that she really enjoyed the mystery of being his Cinderella since being chased by him made her feel loved and wanted. Keiki tells her that they can't be together however because they are brother and sister but Mizua reveals that they're not actually blood related. Despite this bombshell, Keiki still refuses to date her so she asks him for his forgiveness for what she's about to do and kisses him. The next day, Keiki wakes up in his bed, feeling as though the events of the previous day were just a dream. But he realizes that it was indeed reality when Mizuha wakes up next to him and smooches him once more. She reiterates that it's not wrong for her to feel the way she does about her brother, but Keiki is simply overwhelmed and confused by all this. He decides to run away so he can have some time to think this through. He then calls his father, who confirms that Mizuha is not his biological sister as she was actually adopted. Although he's still confused, Keiki decides to return home later that night. When he arrives home, he confronts Mizuha and asks her why she even loves him. Her answer makes him remember the first time they had met and became siblings, something he had conveniently forgotten. 
This was the moment Mizuho began to fall in love with Keiki. But as they embrace one another, Keiki is no longer confused about what he has to do. Just as he had promised her when they were kids that he would be her brother forever, Keiki decides that their relationship must continue as brother and sister and nothing more. After this, his life seemingly returns to normal, but Keiki is still not any closer to having a normal girlfriend like he desperately desires, which makes this a very relatable anime. Let me know in the comments section below if you predicted Cinderella's true identity, and as always, thanks for watching and I hope to see you all again in the next video.